In this Easy Ad video lecture, we will learn Faraday's law, nature of induced EMF as dynamically and statically induced EMF, the concept of self and mutually induced EMF, coefficient of coupling, force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field, and Fleming's left hand and right hand rules. Michael Faraday was an English scientist who contributed to the fields of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is a basic law of electromagnetism that predicts how a magnetic field will interact with an electric circuit to produce an electromotive force EMF. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Faraday's first law states that when the conductor cuts the magnetic flux lines, an EMF is induced in it. The induced EMF is given by the equation E equals BLV sine theta and is measured in volts, where E equals induced EMF, B equals flux density in Weber per meter square, L equals length of the conductor in meters, theta equals angle between the direction of the motion of the conductor and the magnetic field. Faraday's second law states that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkages. Consider the coil having n turns. The initial flux linked with the coil is phi 1. During time t, let's say that flux changes from phi 1 to phi 2. Hence, the rate of change of flux becomes n into phi 2 minus n into phi 1 upon t. Now, as per the first law, the EMF will be induced and as per the second law, it will be proportional to the rate of the change of flux. Hence, E equals N into K into d phi by dt. If K equals 1, then E equals ND phi by dt. The EMF gets induced in two ways, as dynamically induced EMF and statically induced EMF. Let's start with dynamically induced EMF. An induced EMF which is due to the physical movement of a coil or conductor with respect to the flux or movement of a magnet with respect to the stationary coil is called as dynamically induced EMF or motional induced EMF. The change in the flux linking with the coil can be brought by moving the flux with respect to the conductor or by moving the coil or the conductor with respect to the flux. Let a conductor placed in a magnetic field is moved through a small distance dx in time dt. Then, area swept by the conductor is equal to length into dx. Flux cut by the conductor equals flux density into area swept. According to Faraday's law, the magnitude of induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux. Substituting the value of d phi but dx by dt represents the rate of change of displacement, which is the velocity of a conductor. Therefore, E equals BLV volts. If the plane of the conductor makes an angle theta with the plane of the flux, then the EMF induced is given by the equation E equals BLV sine theta. Now, let's study the statically induced EMF. When the EMF is induced in a coil without physical movement of a coil or a magnet, it is called as statically induced EMF. To induce an EMF in the circuit, there must be change in the flux associated with the coil that can be achieved by increasing and decreasing the current with time, without any physical movement. The statically induced EMF is further divided into self-induced EMF and mutually induced EMF. The first type is self-induced EMF. The EMF induced in a coil due to the change of its own flux linked with it is called as self-induced EMF. Consider the current I flows through the coil when we close the switch S. This current produces same flux, say phi. If the magnitude of this current changes, then the flux generated also changes without any physical motion of a conductor. As the flux changes, it generates the EMF according to Faraday's law. As this EMF is induced by the own flux of a conductor, it is called as self-induced EMF. 
the property of a coil which opposes any change in the current passing through it is called as self inductance or only inductance the coefficient of self inductance is given by l the second type is mutually induced emf consider the two coils a and b having number of turns as n1 and n2 respectively let the current i1 flow through a coil and a produces flux phi1 some part of the flux gets linked with the coil b which we call as a mutual flux phi2 if we change the magnitude of current i1 the linked fluxes phi1 and phi2 also change and emf gets induced in the coils thus the change in the current i1 of a coil a induces the emf into coil b this phenomenon is called as the mutually induced emf it is defined as if the flux produced by one coil is linked with the second coil and if the change in the flux produced by the first coil induces the emf in the second coil then such emf is called as mutually induced emf the coefficient of mutual inductance is given by the formula shown where n1 equals number of turns of primary coil n2 equals number of turns of secondary coil i1 equals current through primary coil and i2 equals current through secondary coil let's study the concept of coefficient of coupling it is defined as the ratio of actual mutual inductance present between the two coils to the maximum possible value of the mutual inductance we know that the mutual inductance can be represented in two different ways multiplying m into m we get the equation as shown rearranging the terms of this equation we write it as k1 into k2 into n1 phi1 upon i1 into n2 phi2 upon i2 but n1 phi1 upon i1 is the self inductance of coil 1 and n2 phi2 upon i2 is the self inductance of coil 2 substituting these values into the above equation we get m equals square root of k1 into k2 into square root of l1 into l2 now the factor root k1 into k2 is called as the coefficient of coupling and is represented by letter k thus we get the expression for the coupling factors as k equals m upon root of l1 into l2 Let's study the small concept of a force on a current carrying conductor. Consider the conductor placed between the two magnetic poles. Here we get the two magnetic fields, one due to the magnets itself and the second field generated around the conductor when the current flows through it. These two fluxes interact with each other such that on one side both the fluxes are in the same direction and on the other side their direction is opposite. Hence we get the accumulation of the flux on one side and the weakening of flux on the other side whenever the two magnetic fields interact with each other the force gets generated whose direction is determined by fleming's rules hey it's time to concentrate now so let's see what fleming's rules are sir john ambrose fleming was an electrical engineer and a physicist he was famous for the left hand rule which forms the basic principle of electric motors according to fleming's left hand rule if three fingers of a right hand namely thumb index finger and middle finger are outsourced so that they are mutually perpendicular to each other and if the index finger is made to a point and if the index finger is made to point in the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger gives the direction of the current then the thumb indicates the direction of the motion of a conductor the motion of a conductor occurs because of the force getting generated due to interaction of two magnetic fields fleming's right hand rule states that if three fingers of a right hand namely thumb index finger and middle finger are outsourced so that they are mutually perpendicular to each other and if the index finger is made to point in the direction of the magnetic field then the thumb indicates the direction of the motion of a conductor and the middle finger gives the direction of the emf induced in the conductor thus fleming's left hand rule is to determine the direction of the force if magnetic field and current directions are known whereas 
the right hand rule is used to determine the direction of the current if the direction of the magnetic field and the force generated are known. The magnitude of this force generated depends upon three main factors flux, density of a magnetic field, magnitude of current I passing through the conductor and the active length L of a conductor. It is given by the formula F equals B into I into L into sine theta and its unit is Newton. Thus, when the conductor is parallel to magnetic flux lines, the force is zero as theta equals zero. And when the conductor is perpendicular to magnetic flux lines, the force is maximum as theta equals 90 degrees and sine theta equals one. The force behind the flow of flux or production of the flux in the magnetic circuit is called as magnetomotive force, MMF, determines the magnetic field strength and is given by the formula MMF equals N into I, where N equals number of turns and I equals current through the coil. Let's have a quick review now. Michael Faraday was an English scientist. His first law states that when the conductor cuts the magnetic flux lines, an EMF is induced in it. Faraday's second law states that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkages. The EMF gets induced in two ways, as dynamically induced EMF and statically induced EMF. EMF gets induced dynamically due to the physical movement of a magnet or a conductor. EMF induces statically as the change in the magnitude of the current brings the change in the flux and no physical movement is involved. The statically induced EMF are of two types, self-induced EMF and mutually induced EMF. The coefficient of coupling is given by two formulae as shown. Fleming's left-hand rule is to determine the direction of the force if magnetic field and current directions are known, whereas the right-hand rule is used to determine the direction of the current if the direction of the magnetic field and the force generated are known.